Well, I hope everybody had a chance to tell some scary ghost stories this holiday season. Now let's look at Casper the Friendly Ghost Nebula. Welcome to SETI Astro. So around this time of year, I know most people are focused on shooting the horse head, maybe the Great Orion Nebula again, uh, maybe a wider field of the, the Witch Head Nebula. There's just off to the side of the, the belt of Orion is M78, uh, sometimes known as the Casper the Friendly Ghost Nebula. It, it, it's a really great reflection nebula with uh, just, just a lot of features if you spend a little time with it. So I took uh, 84 exposures each, each one being uh, three minutes for red, green, and blue. So that's uh, just about a little over 12 and a half hours of data just for the colored data. And you can see in the red there is, there, there is a lot of structure starting to happen in the red. And then green is a fairly continuum look for the reflection and blue by far has, has the brightest reflections down in here. I also went uh, a bit deeper on the luminance. I have 350 two minute exposures. So just shy of 12 hours just for luminance. Really wanted to capture any um, dust and uh, nebulosity in there in the continuum part of it. Because, you know, reflection nebula, there, there, there are a lot of things that narrow band's not going to pick up. And especially with the, the dark nebula lanes through here, you really want to try to get as much detail as you can on some of these other dark cloud areas that um, would be noisy and, and not resolved well. So, you know, removing the stars and doing a little processing here, especially with HDR MT to, to tame the core down a bit. Kind of, kind of left me this the final starless, non-linear luminance channel. I think uh, turned out really, really great. We got these really dark uh, structures throughout it. We could see down into the core, which is great on um, both reflection nebula. I also was intrigued with hydrogen in the area, looking at really broad short focal length uh, images. It, it seemed like there was a lot of hydrogen nebulosity. So I did take 47 15 minute exposures for hydrogen. Uh, that gave me this uh, here in the, the linear state. You can see uh, plenty of other little things poking through the dust now that we're just looking at in hydrogen. Dust isn't, uh, doesn't affect hydrogen emission as much as it does the, the other wavelengths. Uh, maybe if I had a really cool infrared filter or something we could have went deeper but just these massive swirly bits of hydrogen were really great so i was really excited to do continuum subtraction with the with the red filter and doing continuum subtraction oh man this is probably one of the cleanest continuum subtractions i've i've seen uh so the the hydrogen gas is just so cool and swirly there's even like this big swirl of it down here uh I'm not sure how that's interacting with the other cloud structures and then again poking through that dark nebula in there is is all this uh, emission structure we'll we'll explore a little later and the the core of the one reflection nebula uh does have hydrogen structure deep down in it and then the one doesn't so this this here is just mostly artifacts of the continuum subtraction i mean there, there's a little right here not nothing crazy so it really is just the one reflection nebula that had a lot of hydrogen emission deep down in the core and the other one really is pretty pure just with its reflection it's pretty pure with just the continuum of the reflection not not much for emission i did end up colorizing the hydrogen emission i didn't know how i was going to to blend it with the lrgb image yet but this uh should give a really great idea of just how broad the, the hydrogen emission is in this area that you, you don't see a lot when people are doing LRGB solely on uh, Casper the Friendly Ghost. The LRGB combination was pretty straightforward. I, I combined the RGB images. I did try using um, the Mars gradient correction tool as much as I could, right? Trying to give the new tool a, a good chance. Uh, I found that it, it, it worked pretty darn well on uh, this type of structure where there wasn't a whole lot of 
overarching super bright nebulosity, right? Even the reflection nebula wasn't too terribly bright in the image. And this is probably one of the more widely photographed areas, so it had plenty of reference data. But for the hydrogen and the luminosity itself, I, I did go for more traditional gradient removal methods, but for the R, G, and B channels, uh, that, that worked pretty well. So this is where I ended up with my final LRGB image. I think it, I think it looks really great. There's all this dust obscuring the stars. Like over here, there's only a couple bright stars kind of on the foreground of that huge amount of dust over on the, the right-hand side here. Uh, and you really don't see that stuff peeking through here in, in the RGB continuum that we are seeing in, in hydrogen alpha. So now it was a matter of trying to combine that really broad hydrogen with the LRGB and I'm, I'm not gonna lie, I banged my head against the wall a ton trying to get this stuff together so it would look nice, right? I, I really wanted kind of the swirly reds and these reds poking through and not washing out the whole image in red or a salmon pink or something like that either. I did try a couple different methods. I, I used this one here, uh, the image blend script to, to kind of blend them. Um, I, I, I did like that. Maybe, maybe the hydrogen was um, just a little, little browner out in the edges. I did do another where I did do another where I masked and screened it in. I, I, I really like this, um, but it kind of does detract from the uh, reflection nebula somewhat. But there's good contrast now between the the red and the blue. I also had this rendition where I did some frequency separation and just tried to bump the frequency that was in the hydrogen channel into the red channel and that kind of got me some highlighted structures but overall the, the hydrogen in the background was, was pretty weak so this is more just LRGB with a, with a touch of hydrogen. You can start seeing the, those hydrogen structures poking through the, poking through the clouds though. Um, so if, if you guys got a, a favorite version of the one with the hydrogen, let me know. I did load a couple of them on Astrobin, and we'll look at that as, as in a second too. But the really interesting stuff now comes looking at the one with the hydrogen in it, and all these hydrogen streaks poking out, and all this hydrogen structure here, and then you have some of these hydrogen red dots almost just like little stellar things poking and um and a very interesting feature here is this part of the the shadow does have hydrogen around it too giving it kind of like this this pinkish hue but the pinkish hue was was kind of also in the the lrgb too so there's a lot going on in the core that's just getting obscured from a lot of the the, the gas that's ionized. Uh, so may, may want to spend some extra time on the core in the future. And then the, the other reflection nebula just, just looking amazing there. Very, very ghostly in the distance. And again, some, some interesting hydrogen little streaks going on. So what I ended up looking for were Herbig Harrow objects and young stellar objects. And looking in what's my image, you can see that a number of these things are classified as Herbig Harrow objects. Some of them are distended, so I, I'm imagining it, you know they're all associated with a, a singular dot. But but some of it isn't really classified yet either, which is which is always intriguing. There's there's still stuff to be seen in these in these clouds. There really wasn't a whole lot of professional data in the, the mass database either for, for M78. So there's still discoveries to be made for sure. I did end up making two different collages. One just for the Herbig Harrow objects, like Herbig Harrow 70 in here. It's just a little tiny dot. Like some of this, some of this would be really cool to see in very high resolution. The other one I did was all the young stellar objects, and there was a lot of young stellar objects here. Uh, even some that you, you, you wouldn't really necessarily think of at first glance that may just look like uh, 
just normal bright stars, but they're they're stars that are still forming, right? They're still getting their planetary disks around them. This is a really tiny one out there. So just a lot of cool stuff hidden hidden in amongst uh, Casper the Friendly Ghost here. I did update Astrobin with my Casper the Friendly Ghost embedded in Ghostly H Alpha. So I have the original LRGB image, and then if you mouse over, it'll show all that hydrogen emission. I think this was the best way for me to present it. Uh, so you could kind of see just the continuum and then bringing in all that hydrogen. You see the swirls and all that structure off to the side. Uh, let me know down in the comments though if you think this should be my main image and then if you mouse over it goes to the the normal continuum image i did also put in uh just a just another version with even kind of like less hydrogen structure too just really trying to feel out what what looked the best and i couldn't couldn't decide i have all my acquisition details here a, a little write-up of some of some of the stuff we were looking at I do have the continuum subtracted image in there if you want to look at that, the collages of the Herbig Harrow objects and Young Stellar objects, and then just some really cool close and crops of some of the key areas here, some of these reflection areas, the main uh, reflection area, that, that second bulb, some of the, the hydrogen emission poking through. I've also updated my website, SetiAstro.com, with my Casper the Friendly Ghost Nebula. It has the, the mouse over zoomable image. You can click on and get the full resolution. I have the collages you could download. And then uh, what I thought was really interesting, I, I put a big slider here. So you can see the H alpha LRGB image here and then slide over and just see the continuum subtracted hydrogen data. Um, I, I just like exploring images in, in this way. And you could really see that the, the reflection nebula off to the right is just totally gone, right? There, there's just almost no hydrogen emission in there. It just kind of swirls around it. But the center one definitely has some hydrogen structure deep deep in its core. Well, I hope everybody's getting some time with uh, friends and family this holiday season and the skies have been clear for you. Please comment, like, and subscribe.